welcome back. Please note, in case we want to scale up this comp, it might become pixelated and lose quality. To avoid this, we can activate the collapse function for this layer. The collapse transformations function is a powerful feature in After Effects that allows you to maintain the quality and scalability of vector or 3D layers when nested inside a pre-composition. It gives you more flexibility in working with complex compositions and helps ensure that your designs remain sharp and visually appealing. And if I turn on this function for our pre-comp, you'll notice a major improvement in the quality right away. All right, I will bring it back to 100. If you don't see this icon, you can click here. So let's apply the collapse function to all layers. Now let's say we want to move the text to another location. If we move this layer, the other layers will remain in place. Let's see what we need to do so that all of them move along with the first layer. We need to select all layers except the first one and use parent and link to link them to the first layer. So let's drag the pick whip of all layers to the first layer like this. Now, when we move the first layer, the rest of the layers will move with it. All right, let's set the preview to fit. And now, let's select the first pre-comp, press S, and increase the size of the layers to 150. As you can see, after scaling the layers, the stroke did not scale proportionally, which made it appear thinner. If we want to make it thicker, instead of opening each layer manually and adjusting the size property that controls the stroke thickness, we can find this property using the search bar. To display it for all layers, let's select all of them, type size in the search bar, and press enter. Now you will see the size property, which is associated with the stroke parameter, found in the layer styles. Let's enlarge this panel. And instead of changing the thickness one by one, we can link these properties just as we linked the layers before. As you can see, next to size, there is a pick whip. This means we can link this property to any other property. So let's link the size of this layer to the size of the first layer. Now let's do the same for the rest of the layers. And now, we control the line thickness of all the layers through one layer. This will make it much easier for us to handle changes in the future. So let's change it to 6. We can do the same thing for the property that controls the color of the stroke. For this, let's delete the word size from the search bar. Select all the layers, type color here, and press enter. Okay, so we just need to figure out which exact color we're talking about out of all the options. Here we can see that this color belongs to the fill effect, which is not what we need. And here, we have a color that belongs to stroke, which is the one we're looking for. So let's link all the color properties of this layer to the color of the first layer like this. Let's do the same for the rest of the layers. And now, if we need to make changes in the future, we don't have to do it for each layer separately. We control this property through one layer. Okay, let's close the search bar. Save the project and move on. Now let's create this cool animated background that we see in the example. So first, we need to create a solid. Right click here, go to new, and select solid. Let's choose the blue color, enter here, and darken it a bit. Now click OK here, and here. And now, let's bring the solid we created below all the layers. Next, to create the grid. Go to effects and search for the effect called grid, drag the effect onto our solid, and let's change its parameters. First, to see both the grid and the solid, let's change the blending mode to multiply. Now let's change the color of the grid to the dark color from the color palette. And to make this grid symmetrical, we've got two choices. We can either change it using corner point, or control it with slider. And now, with the slider, we can make the grid bigger or smaller so it stays symmetrical. Let's set it to 140. 
Then we can control the thickness of the grid lines. Let's change it to 5. And now, to animate the grid, we need to change the value of a parameter called anchor. We can also move it using the small handle located here. Let's drag it here while holding down the shift key. Now, let's set keyframes for this parameter. Make sure you are at the beginning of the timeline and create a keyframe. To see the keyframe we created, let's select the layer and press U. Now, let's go to the end of the animation and move the grid to the side. Let's drag this small handle here while holding down the shift key. Let's see what we've got. Let After Effects a few seconds to render the preview. Alright. Did you notice a slight jump in the background when the animation started playing again? I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it better. Pay attention to what happens in this area. It happened because the grid didn't loop properly. To create a loop for the grid, we need to move it in a way that it reaches the same point as it appeared at the beginning of the animation. We already know how to do that. Let's capture a snapshot of the frame at the beginning of the animation using Take Snapshot. Now, let's go to the end of the animation and see if the position of the grid is correct. As you can see, the grid at the end of the animation doesn't look the same as it did at the beginning. To make it look the same as in the beginning, we need to adjust the last keyframe and move the grid slightly to the side. Let's compare it now. We're getting very close. It is very important to hover over the keyframe we want to change when we change the value. Let's move it a bit more. And there, we hit the point perfectly. Let's see it again. With that, we have finished animating the scene and we are ready to render the animation. Let's close this layer. Now, to render this scene, we can use the shortcut Control M. Now we are in the After Effects Render Queue panel. Here, we see which composition we are rendering. Let's choose to render it in H.264 format, which is an MP4 file. Now, let's choose to save the file in the renders folder we created. We can leave the name as it is right now, which is the name of the composition. I have no problem with that. So let's click on save and then click on the render button. Let's wait until the render is complete. And now to see the render, we just need to head over to the output mode and click on the link here. It'll take us right to the folder with the video file. Then we can watch it and make sure everything looks good. Great, and now, I want us to get back to the project and learn how to make changes in case we want to change something in the design or the animation of the text. But before learning how to make changes, let's organize our project first. For that, let's go back to the project panel. If you don't see it here, you can click on the arrows here and select project. Alright, so first, let's create a new folder called Assets. Now, click here to ensure you are not selecting anything and create another folder. We call it Precomps. Now, into the Assets folder, we will drag the Color Palette and the Solids folder. And now, let's drag this Precomp into the Precomps folder. Finally, let's label the main composition in blue. Great! And now, Let's close the Effects and Presets tab and press Ctrl S to save the project. And now we are ready to move on to the final part of this lesson. See you there.